This is your brain on music. When we listen to music, many different brain regions are activated to process what we're hearing. The perception of sound and its tones is processed in the auditory cortex. This information is sent to the hippocampus, where it evokes memories for the song and related experiences. Sometimes we tap our foot to the beat of the song or even get up and dance. These functions are controlled by the motor cortex and cerebellum. Sometimes music moves us to tears as we, you know, feel all the feels due to activity in our cerebellum, nucleus accumbens, and amygdala. And when we know that our favorite part of a song is coming up, our prefrontal cortex is activated with anticipation. But did you know these other interesting ways that music affects your brain? One, music affects how we perceive things. In a 2008 study, Participants were asked to listen to short excerpts of emotional music and were then shown a photograph of a face. When asked to rate the emotional content of that face, participants were more likely to rate it according to the type of music they had just heard. For example, happy music made happy faces seem happier, and sad music made sad faces seem sadder. Interestingly, they also interpreted neutral expressions to match the tone of the music they had just been listening to. That's right. Music is so closely linked to emotion that it can actually manipulate what we see. Number two, listening to Mozart does not make you smarter. In 1993, a research team found that after listening to Mozart's sonata for two pianos for 10 minutes, people performed better in a spatial temporal reasoning task. This got misinterpreted and widely reported as an increase in intelligence. And so the myth that listening to Mozart makes you smarter began. Of course, passive listening to music does not improve your IQ or general measures of intelligence, but... Number three, learning to play a musical instrument can improve other abilities. Recent studies have shown that children who learn to play an instrument have improved motor and reasoning skills. They can more easily understand spoken word, perceive emotions in the voice, and multitask compared to their peers. In fact, a study published last year showed that musical training may promote the development and maintenance of executive functions, which are cognitive capacities that allow for planned, controlled behavior. Number four, but music isn't all good. Sometimes it can be really distracting. A group of teenage drivers were observed while listening to their own choice of music, safe music choices provided by researchers, or complete silence. Obviously, the teenagers preferred to listen to their own music, but they made more mistakes and drove more aggressively while listening to their own choice of music, even if it was generally upbeat and happy. Surprisingly, they didn't drive best in complete silence either. It seems that unfamiliar or uninteresting music is best for safe driving. Number five, overall music is probably good for our health. Music releases dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter in our brain that is linked to our reward system. Music not only makes us feel good, but it can also reduce pain and even help people recover from stroke or other injuries. Listening to music during exercise can increase endurance, and music can even improve symptoms of dementia. So, music may not be the shortcut to making geniuses, but it does have powerful effects on our brain and body. Which of these facts about your brain on music surprised you?